Alright, what's up, gang? We're getting right back to it. Um, this time we're gonna be checking out. Uh, they said that why all vehicles, I think they say all, um, start as clay models. Um, I wasn't aware of that. I did see a few um, examples of it, but I didn't know that all of them um, did that. Like it was an um, understood thing or nothing like that. But yeah, we're about to be checking this out. Every automobile you've ever seen once sure started as a full-size, carefully sculpted clay model. Constructing these models can cost automakers hundreds of thousands of dollars per vehicle. With major advancements in 3D imaging and virtual reality technology, yeah, why are automakers that. still investing so much money in giant hunks of clay to design their cars? Well, typically in a clay model, they have, um, it's just usually a steel frame with, with your wheel hubs attached to it. And on top of the steel frame, it will uh, get, get blocks of foam glued to it. And then from there, we'll pack mm. you know, one to two inches of clay on that, which will be machined. Um, which then we start That's pretty much how they be um, repairing. refining the design. From there, Cause. the details vary based on how intricate of a model it is. Still, a full-size clay model may feature $20,000 worth of materials. And the hours of labor contributed by digital designers, yeah. sculptors, and milling it's by still one vehicle, so it don't really matter how much they spend on Depending on how many adjustments are made to the model, it can take a sell one and then make the money back. The origins of clay modeling can be traced back to General Motors in the 1930s. Harley Earl, head of GM's styling studio, was the first to turn sketches into full-scale models using malleable clay. It changed the industry by how much it simplified and sped up the design process. Designers could now visualize shapes and forms that were difficult and time-consuming to create in steel. But in the 21st That's century, cool. the age sense, of too. all things digital, why is clay modeling still worth it? As much as you can do on a screen, digitally, mathematically, it's still in essence a 2D image. So at some point in the process, very early on, we need a 3D image that we can see, we can touch. Uh, well, right, well, you can say it's 2D, but once you got the goggles on, it'd be 3D. Screen. So. And the thing is with a 3D model, you can't lie. There's no cheating. It is what it is. What you see on a on the, on the tube or on the screen, uh, it might look great, even in VR. For example, that's how it's just like that. There's always a lot of surprises. For example, certain lines, you know, on a, on, on a digital model, for example, they may look sweet, but when it's milled in full size, they might hang and the, the proportions might look, look wrong. Like I say, you can't lie with 3D. Clay models can also be useful for aerodynamic testing. In the wind tunnels, what? where engineers evaluate a car's drag or how easily it passes through the air around it, they're the perfect time-saving tool. Well, ultimately, you need to, to lower the drag coefficient. You know, particularly in an electric car, you know, the lower figure, the better, obviously, because it's more efficient. And the thing is with a wind tunnel, it's very expensive to rent per hour. No, that's fine. It's thousands and thousands of pounds sometimes. So we do work on a claim on in the wind tunnel, so we can quickly implement changes. Because time, time is money, basically. And although we have computer models for aerodynamics, we still need to double check to see if we're 100% sure. Perhaps most importantly, what clay models reveal that digital imaging doesn't is what the vehicle will look like in natural light. One of the crucial tests no, is taking cool. it outside think about where that. designers can see what the car will look like, where it will actually be driving. It's here that they can see how the sun bounces off of its curves and whether it looks like they imagined or just plain wrong. This doesn't mean clay models are an ancient design method that hasn't changed. Decades ago, when the entire model had to be developed by hand, it could take weeks upon weeks to create a model to begin working with and testing. I'm about to say just to even Today, start. with CNC machines and data-driven systems, a detailed model can be milled overnight for sculptors to begin working on. Just like the entire car industry, it's evolved to be faster. In our design process too, like we so make basically many get the old car quickly and in go data, from there. digital data and quickly review in VR um, every single week. 
Um, but whenever we need a validation, we always mill it out again in clay overnight and check it again. If, if it needs some handwork, we do it quickly. Despite how much quicker computers have made carving whole cars out, there's still an area where human modelers have the advantage, finesse. Sometimes, a detail on a car's body may need to be changed as little as a millimeter. An edit like this can be tedious, sure, that like but that using yeah, malleable clay allows designers to visualize like and make multiple changes with real-world proportions, something a computer rendering can't compete with. Even if digital technology continues to make car design less labor-intensive, only clay models finished by human sculptors will help car companies achieve what they're aiming for. Oh yeah, that was fire, that last part. I didn't even know we got through the video. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Stop up. Uh, comment how y'all felt about it. Uh, what other channels y'all rock with? Um, see y'all on another one.